The Fey Marne Belt Tunnel is exactly what you get when you combine precision engineering, record-breaking ambition, and a sea that doesn't want to cooperate. This 18-kilometer underwater link between Denmark and Germany is the longest immersed tunnel in the world. A tunnel so massive it's being built in pieces the size of city blocks and dropped onto the ocean floor like giant Lego bricks. But that's not the only interesting thing about this tunnel, because before a single tunnel element touches the water, an entire harbor, factory, and coastline will be transformed. Calling it just another tunnel would be wrong. Building a tunnel beneath the sea isn't just about digging a hole, it's about mastering nature, logistics, and physics all at the same time. So how do you build the world's longest immersed tunnel, and why does it matter? Let's look into the construction methods, the benefits, and the real-world challenges behind this engineering marvel. The Fey Marenbelt Tunnel stretches 18 kilometers across the Baltic Sea and will connect Lowland in Denmark to Puttgarden in Germany. With a project of this scale, the construction is a massive international effort. Three main contractor groups, FLC, FBC, and FSC, are handling everything from design to operation. That's part of a strategy called design and build, where the companies responsible for the design also commit to building and running it, ensuring a seamless process from blueprint to final tunnel. You may ask, why did they not just build a bridge? As it turns out, the Feymarn Belt Strait is prone to high winds and rough weather, which is no good for long bridges. Hence, the tunnel option was taken, and while a board tunnel might sound like a high-tech option, it was ruled out quite early on. The seabed just isn't drill-friendly. That's why Denmark turned to a homegrown speciality, the Immersed Tunnel. It's a method with a solid track record like the Orison Tunnel, and it checks the boxes for safety, cost, and environmental impact. So how do you build the world's longest immersed tunnel? Well, instead of drilling underground, massive tunnel elements are built on land, floated out, and dropped into a trench on the seabed. And to do all that, a giant construction site was prepared in Rodbyhaven, Denmark. This includes utilities, access roads, and even four kilometers of new cycle paths so locals can get around safely. A work harbor was also built from scratch to receive up to 80,000 tons of materials every week like stone, sand, and steel by sea instead of overloading roads with heavy trucks. And over on the German side, a smaller but critical harbor is being built at Puttgarden, helping the supply chain of materials for the tunnel. Then comes the heart of the operation, the world's largest tunnel factory covering 1 million square meters. It will have six production lines pumping out massive building blocks of the tunnel with 79 standard elements, each 217 meters long and weighing 73,500 tons and 10 special elements equipped with basement levels for housing essential technology. These segments are made indoors in climate-controlled conditions with meticulous quality control. Each one takes nine weeks to cast and includes a reinforced basement space for technical systems. Once built, they're fitted with waterproof bulkheads, floated out using tugs, and immersed one by one into a trench dredged into the seabed. Near the factory, a temporary town is rising too, complete with offices, accommodation, and facilities for the thousands of workers involved. But how do you fit tunnel blocks under the sea? That's where precision dredging comes in. To make room for the tunnel, a trench is dredged across the seabed, 18 kilometers long and carved out with pinpoint accuracy, removing 19 million cubic meters of sand, rock, and soil. Different dredgers handle different depths, in shallow waters, backhoe dredgers do the digging. Further out, giant grab dredgers and sand suckers take over, lifting thousands of tons from the ocean floor. Once the trench is ready, each tunnel element, massive concrete segments the size of football fields, is sealed with waterproof bulkheads, floated out to sea, and slowly lowered into the trench. It's a delicate ballet of tugboats, GPS, divers, and heavy machinery, to connect them, engineers use pressure-sealed chambers. As water is pumped out, the external pressure pushes the elements tightly together, forming a watertight bond. Just like that, block by block, the tunnel grows. Finally, 
With the structure laid out, it's time to wire it all up. Rail tracks, ventilation systems, lighting, cameras, emergency exits, communications lines, even painting, all meticulously installed and tested again and again to meet strict safety and performance standards before the grand opening in mid-2029. But to even enter the tunnel, you need a proper gateway. The way it's where the tunnel portals come in, massive concrete entrances in Rod Bihoven and Poot Garden that connect the tunnel to upgraded highways and railways on both sides. In the spring of 2024, the permanent dike protecting the Danish tunnel portal was completed, replacing the temporary one and reshaped the coastline in the process. But what's the payoff for all this effort? For starters, travel time. The Femern Belt Tunnel will cut the trip between Denmark and Germany to just seven minutes by train and 10 minutes by car. No more waiting for ferries or dealing with unpredictable schedules, but speed is just the beginning. This project is also a big win for the planet. By shipping in materials by sea and reusing the 19 million cubic meters of dredged seabed to build a 300 hectare coastal park, the construction is reducing emissions and creating new recreational land in the process. And by shifting freight from roads to rails, the tunnel helps cut emissions across the region. It's built to last, too. With advanced casting techniques, pressure-sealed joints, and climate-controlled production to reduce thermal stress, the tunnel is engineered for a 120-year lifespan. And thanks to factory production, they're producing a massive tunnel element roughly every two weeks, making it far more efficient than traditional tunnel boring. And let's not forget the people behind it. From engineers and factory workers to suppliers and local businesses, this project is creating thousands of jobs across Denmark, Germany, and beyond. But building something this big is never simple. Firstly, the sea doesn't wait. Dredging an 18-kilometer trench in open water is anything but straightforward. You need specialized vessels, all operating with surgical precision. One wrong move, and the whole foundation could be off. And then there's the environmental pressure. Every action is under the microscope. With concerns about marine life, water quality, and seabed disturbance, the project had to meet some of the strictest environmental standards in Europe. And it hasn't been without pushback. Lawsuits, protests, and intense public scrutiny were all part of the process. And of course, this isn't just one construction site. It's dozens of moving parts across two countries. Factories, ships, dredgers, workers, permits, weather delays, it all must be synced in perfect harmony. Despite legal challenges from conservation groups, the project was greenlit in 2020. Now, it's full steam ahead. The Femarn Belt Tunnel isn't just a shortcut between countries. When it opens in 2029, it'll be a game changer for travel and transport in Europe, with over 12,000 cars and 100 trains expected to pass through every day. In simple words, the Femarn Belt Tunnel will be a shortcut, a job creator, and a climate solution all rolled into one. So, what do you think? Should more countries invest in mega tunnels like the Femon Belt, or are there better ways to connect people across borders? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to hype, like, and share this video. Subscribe to Mega Structures for more.